Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Neta. I am a front-end engineer and consultant at a company called uh, Tikal. And I want to talk to you today about functional reactive programming, or FRP. Before I do that, I just want to show of hands who feels really comfortable about RxJS. Oh, that's good. You're my people. OK, we're going to go into RxJS a little bit for those of you who are new to it. And we're also going to talk about functional reactive programming. Now, if you've ever gone online and looked for resources on this, chances are you've seen things like this. It's pretty, right? It's from the Rx website, and it looks a little bit scary. But what's more is it's very, very focused on implementation and not so much on FRP as a paradigm. And I think a lot of the things we have out there today are like this. So they tell us how to do things, but they don't necessarily tell us how to think in an FRP way. And for me, the paradigm or the way of thinking are a lot more interesting. So I decided to study them and practice them by building an app entirely and only in RxJS. And that's what I want to show you today. So this app is a productivity timer. Uh, I have a bit of ADD, and this method of working with timers really helped me focus, so I decided to build one. Uh, it's pretty standard in terms of what it does. So you click Start, and it'll start counting down. Then when it reaches zero, it'll give you a nice alert saying, yay, you're done working. Awesome. Uh, then if you want to take a break, maybe go get a coffee, you can pause it. And then if you're me, eventually you realize your coffee break took way too long, so then you can restart it. And today we're going to be looking at the start and pause mechanisms here and how they're built in FRP. Now, before we look at the code, let's talk about the two main building blocks of FRP, which are streams and pure functions. And Camille mentioned a bit of this uh, earlier, but I want to go into more detail in RxJS. So streams are a type that emits values over time. That means that a stream is characterized both by the values it emits and by when it emits them. In RxJS, they're called observables, and we can actually see one in the wild in our code. Now, I'm just going to um, comment out my timer functionality because I want to sh show you how we work with observables. So this start stream or start observable is created using the RxJS from event uh, function. And it's created from uh, it, the click on the start button. Now, what does that mean? Let's just have a look inside that by subscribing to it and logging the result. And we can see what this stream emits, or what does it mean when I'm talking about a stream. So now when I click Start, you see it emits this value, mouse event. Click it again, we see another one, and then another one. So this is a stream that emits values of type mouse event, and it emits them when the button is clicked. So that's its two characteristics. Then the second building block we have here is pure functions. So these are functions that have explicit inputs, explicit and consistent outputs. So that means they return the same output for the same input every time. And they have no side effects. So they don't change anything outside themselves. And the way we most often see this in FRP is through operators. Those are pure functions that take a stream as an input and return a new stream as an output. And we can see one of these as well. We're going to go for the uh, quite common map operator. Now, instead of just subscribing to my start stream here, I want to pass it through the map operator. I'm doing that using the pipe method that is a part of RxJS. And then what map does is, for each value emitted on this input stream here, it creates a new value based on the function we pass it. And then it emits that new value in the output stream. So now if we look at this stream again, see what happens when I click the start, you see now it's emitting this uh, one. So it's being mapped to this value. And it turns out that these two building blocks are enough to encapsulate all of our application logic. And then the way we want to think here is we want to think about how we apply operators to streams to create the results we want. 
Um, I want to show you my app now, and I just want to start by talking about inputs and outputs. This is the first thing I did when I was coding my app, is write uh, the inputs and outputs like this in vanilla JavaScript. And there's two reasons I want to start with this. One is input, output is by definition a side effect, and so I want to minimize it and contain it and sort of not touch it again when I'm working on my app logic. And then the second reason I want to start with this is that it's going to give me a really good foundation for structuring my app, because my streams are always going to go from input to output. Now, when I say input here, I'm talking about all and any events that happen in our app. So we've seen clicks and things like user input, but also server responses. These are the places where streams are initiated. And then outputs are sort of the end result of our stream. And that's the place where we want to do things like manipulate the DOM. And we're going to be handling them in our subscribe method. And so when we start by identifying inputs and outputs, what we're really seeing is we're seeing the places where our streams begin, and we're seeing where we want them to go. And from that, we can infer the type of transformations we want to do to them. Let's practice this sort of thinking by analyzing our timer stream. So this is a stream where the input is the start click and the output is that timer display that's counting down. And so it means the first stream here is going to be a stream that emits mouse events like we saw, and the last stream is going to emit these strings of timey wimey values. And it turns out that this is a really interesting and good first use case because the two main characteristics of the stream are getting transformed here. So I'm going from a stream that emits on the click to a stream that emits every second. And then from that event value we saw, I want to calculate a new value, which is how much time I have left on my timer. And the way it looks like in code is like this. So I'm going to start with a from event method like we saw before. And I can create a stream that emits every second using this timer function that is a part of RxJS. And what it does is it takes as a second argument a duration, and then it emits values every duration. Then the first argument here just tells it when to start, and I want it to start immediately, so I'm uh, passing in zero there. So the from event, I think, makes some sense. And the timer probably makes some sense. But you see that they are joined here with this kind of weirdly named operator called exhaust map. Exhaust map is a higher order operator. And that means it helps us deal with streams of streams. So up until now, we've seen streams that emit values, events, integers, stuff like that. But streams can also emit other streams. And in fact, this ability is what allows us to create complex behaviors in FRP. However, when we're working with streams of streams, we need higher order operators to help us manage the result. What does this all mean? Well, let's, let's look at it in code. So now I'm going to be using this map operator again. But instead of mapping the event to the number one like I just did, I'm going to use that to create my timer. I'll give it a slightly uh, lower uh, duration so that it goes a bit faster. Now when I click my button, you can see what's getting emitted here on this stream is an observable. Click it again, and we can see the same thing. And in fact, what we're seeing here is an observable that emits observables, so a stream of streams. Now, this observable here is the observable created by the timer function. And actually, if you think about it, it makes sense. We said map takes a value emitted on the input and creates a new value and emits that value on the output. So it's emitting this observable on the output. However, this is usually not what we want to achieve. We want to get the values emitted on this timer, and higher order operators help us do that. So now let's see what happens if I use exhaust map, like in my example. Now when I click the button, click it, I get an error. Yes. I always dreamed this would happen. Right, because I want to return the timer here and not the number one, because it's expecting me to return an observable from that function. OK, so now when I click it, you see my timer is being created. So this is what I want. And then the specific functionality of exhaust map is that for the first input, it will create a new output. 
then so long as that output keeps going, it will just ignore any new values on the input. So if I click it again, nothing is happening. I don't know if you can, can you hear me clicking? Probably not. Um, but nothing, trust me that nothing is happening on the click. Now, if this timer was to somehow complete, then the next click would create a new one. But so long as it keeps going, Exhaust Map is just ignoring any new input. So this is one type of higher order operator. There are others who handle things a little bit differently. For example, I could use Switch Map here. And when I do that, what Switch Map does is, for each input, it creates a new output, and then it switches to that output. So in fact, what I'm going to see is, on click, my first timer is started. Then if I click again, you see it's starting a new timer, so a new output. Click it again, and a new output is created, and so on and so forth. So it's just switching to the new output every time. So these are higher order operators, and they're a very central concept in FRP. Now, I'm sure some of you are now sitting in this audience looking at me and thinking, what? If you are, that's OK. You are normal. Higher order operators are notoriously difficult to wrap your head around, and it takes a while for them to click. So if this doesn't make sense right now, that's OK. Let's just take at face value that exhaust map here is creating the type of behavior we want. And let's move on with our timer stream and see how we create the rest of it. So now I have a stream that emits every second, and it's emitting these incrementing integers. So I can use that to calculate how many seconds are left by subtracting that number from the total number of seconds on my timer, which is 1,500. And so this is going to give me the number of seconds left. And then further on down my stream, I can use the map operator again to format it into the display value I want. But for now, I'm going to keep it like this because I also want to tell this stream when to stop. And I'm going to do that with this take while operator that basically just says, only take the values from this stream, only emit the values from this stream, so long as they are uh, bigger than or equal to zero. And this is what's going to stop my timer when it hits zero. And this is it, guys, my timer stream. It's done. And this is the moment. Do you know that moment in building uh, an app that you start to believe it's going to be OK? This is that moment. So I've got my timer stream. I've got a handle on higher order operators. I'm feeling kind of good, kind of happy, maybe even confident. So you guys all know what's going to happen next, right? Well, the next thing I think to myself is, oh, now I just got to implement the pause functionality. How hard could that be? Well, as it turns out, the pause functionality uh, has some interesting problems uh, in terms of FRP. Let's first think about what we're trying to achieve here. So I have this timer stream, and it's emitting these values. I want to somehow combine it with the pause stream so that when pause emits, it'll stop, it'll stop emitting these values. However, it turns out that in RxJS, the most accessible methods we have of stopping observables or stopping streams have to do with completing them. And I don't want to complete the stream in this case, because once it completes, it's never going to emit any more values. And in my case, I want to be able to start it again when start is clicked. And this is the moment when, in fact, I know everything is not going to be OK. And I have to go and take a really long coffee break and sort of think about my life and all of the choices that have led to this and why I thought I, this was even a good idea. Um, but after I sort of regroup, uh, I get back to this. And I look at it, and I realize something. This really isn't about stopping anything at all. It's about switching between two different kinds of streams. And in fact, what we're seeing here is the power of working with streams of streams, because it allows me to create these behaviors. Now, because I know I want to switch between them, that's already pointing me towards the switch map operator. Remember, we saw that switch map creates a new output and switches to it. So if I can somehow combine my start stream and pause stream to both be the input, 
and then map them to different outputs. So map start to this timer and map uh, pause to this empty stream. Then switch map is going to let me switch between them. And that's exactly what I do. Uh, I'm going to be combining the start and pause streams, so I want to start by mapping them each to a unique value so that when they're combined, it's easy for me to tell them apart. And so I'm mapping start to one and pause to zero, and then I'm going to combine them using the merge operator. This is a really central and helpful operator in all FRP systems because what it does is it takes as input multiple streams and returns as output one stream that emits all of their values. So what I'm going to see as an output here is a stream that emits one whenever start is clicked and zero whenever pause is clicked. And now I can use switch map to both map them to different outputs and switch between them. So this countdown stream you're seeing here, that's the stream I created before, what I call the timer stream. And then this never stream is a part of RxJS, and it creates an observable that never emits any values. And so switching between them like this is going to provide me with the start and pause functionality I'm looking for. So this takes me a big step forward, but it also creates another problem for me. Because whenever I start this countdown stream, that RxJS timer is going to start again. And it's going to start again from zero. And because I'm using that value to calculate how much time is left, what I'm going to see in the end in my display is a timer that keeps on starting from 25 minutes. What I want here is some sort of mechanism to know where I was in the countdown stream once pause was clicked. So essentially, I need a way to store state. State is a really interesting idea to handle in FRP because if you think about it, streams only ever have a value at a specific time. They only have a value when they emit. Now, if I want to somehow retain that value and use it in the future, I need to figure out a way to do that. Now, it's true that I could save it to an external variable and then read from that variable later on, but that would be a side effect. So I don't want any side effects in my FRP app. Instead, what I want is something that is able to sample a value from the stream, hold it, and then emit it at some point in the future. What I want is a subject. So subjects are also part of RxJS, and they are both observables and observers. That means that they can emit values, but they can also subscribe to other observables, and this is what allows them to help, this is what allows them to help me manage uh, state. And I want to first show you what I'm thinking about doing here. So what I want, this is my timer stream, and I want when pause is clicked, to sample a value from my time or my countdown stream and save it in this subject here. Then when start is clicked, I want to use that value again to keep on calculating how much time is left. And what's being created here is a circular dependency or a loop where my subject is dependent on my stream, but my stream is also dependent on my subject. So that feels a little bit weird and wrong, but Actually, it's OK, because they're not going to depend on each other at the same time. And in fact, when we're working in FRP, this is something that we expect to see when we're handling state. Let's see what it looks like in code. So what you want to do when you're working with these state loops is you want to set up a subject, and you want to set it up early so that it's available to all subsequent streams to subscribe to them or provide them with values. And this is my subject here and it's going to be subscribing to this stream. Now, what this stream does is it emits the last value from the countdown stream whenever pause is clicked. So if my subject is subscribed to it, my subject is also going to do the same thing. So emit the last value from the countdown stream when pause is clicked. Now, because that's what it does, this doesn't solve my problem yet, right? Because I don't need this value when pause is clicked. I'm going to need it at some point in the future. Uh, however, I can turn around and get it in the future by using the with latest from operator. So this operator returns the last value emitted on my subject. And in fact, what it emits is both the value from the subject and the value from the timer. So then I can use those two values to calculate, again, how much time I have left. 
Now, the only thing I want to make sure here is that my subject always has a value. If I reach this stream and my subject doesn't, hasn't emitted any value, this is going to error. And so I want to initialize the subject with a value, and I can do that using behavior subject. So I'm initializing it here with a value 1500. And this is it. This is my pause functionality. So it's going to allow me to pause and start and pause and start, and also make sure that whenever I start again, I'm at the last place I left off. So I know what you're all thinking now. You're all thinking, wow, FRP is so simple. Are you? Who's thinking that? I have one, you guys. I have one. It's OK. Um, it's not simple. In fact, someone even asked me the other day if RxJS isn't just a bit of over-engineering. Uh, I said no, surprisingly. If I hadn't said no, I uh, probably wouldn't be here today. I'd be maybe under a blanket somewhere, possibly crying. Um, I don't think it's over-engineering. I think what it is, is it's a different paradigm. And so it's challenging some very deep-rooted notions we have about what programming is. And that is hard. Rethinking these ingrained notions about programming is difficult for us. And this is, I think, the friction that makes it difficult to think about this code and write this code. Essentially, what FRP is about is it's about propagating change. That's what streams do. And if you think about it, this is actually a really relevant mental model for the web, because a web app has no reason to do anything unless some event, some change has happened. And then once an event has happened, our job as developers is to make sure whoever needs to know about it knows and that they react accordingly. And what FRP does is it allows us to write code that accurately describes this process without layering abstractions and patterns on top of that. And I think this ability of code to really describe what it does is the opposite of over-engineering. And I think this is the reason it is worthwhile to get into this paradigm and get over the initial hurdle that comes with learning it and learning RxJS. Um, I want to give you a link to the repo so that if you are inspired to think more about this, feel free to go there and play around with it. And I want to thank you for being such a great crowd. Thank you.